Welcome to another episode of Employment Law After Hours. This is actually our second episode and we're super excited to bring it to you. In our second episode, we're gonna continue on with our coverage of the American Rescue Plan Act. In this episode, we're specifically going to talk about how some of your current and former employees may be eligible for free COBRA plan benefits. That's next on Employment Law After Hours. All right, what's up, everyone? I'm Monica. And I'm Brian. And this is Employment Law After Hours, your favorite weekly series where we spend 10 minutes or less navigating the issues keeping employers and companies up at night. Now, before we get to the topic of the day, which, as we teased up, was going to be COBRA coverage, I would be remiss if I didn't say that as an attorney, this podcast is brought to you uh, for the purposes of education and entertainment only. Please do not use anything we say in this show or take it as legal advice and apply it to any specific situation or concern that you may, you may be having. Now, we're both employees of a law firm in Akron, Ohio called Brennan, Manna and Diamond, which has offices in Ohio, Florida, and Arizona. Therefore, if you're an employer in one of those states and you have any questions, regarding the information we presented to you today, please do not hesitate to drop a message in the comment section below or send us a direct message. Without further ado, let's jump into our second episode of Employment Law After Hours. To begin our second episode, we're gonna spend some time recapping where we've been and what we've covered so far. So as we all know, on March 11th, 2021, President Biden signed into law the American Rescue Plan Act. Part of this act that we're gonna to cover today concerns changes to COBRA coverage for current and former employees. Now, traditionally, we all know that COBRA only covers your former employees and they have the opportunity to continue employer-sponsored health coverage at their cost. However, because of the changes that are contained in the American Rescue Plan Act, some of your employees may be eligible for free COBRA coverage that will be paid for by the employer. However, the employer will be reimbursed by the federal government through their payroll tax credits. I'm gonna pass it on over to Monica, who's gonna cover who's eligible for these COBRA subsidies. All right, so as Brian said, the new COBRA expansion is going to go above and beyond what was previously covered um, under COBRA. So those are gonna be your current and former employees who as a result of uh, COVID, um, either experience a reduction in their hours or an involuntary termination from their um, employment. So those are gonna be the things that go above and beyond gross misconduct. More specifically, we're looking at um, current and former employees along with their family members. So this is not just going to be um, your employee, it's also gonna include any family plans. Um, and it is going to be those who would otherwise be eligible for COBRA. So to recap, your current and former employees who are eligible for a COBRA applicable health plan may be entitled to um, uh, COBRA payments to continue their coverage at no cost to them. So essentially what this means is your current employees who have received a reduction in hours that takes them below the eligibility for health care, or your former employees who had an involuntary separation from employment except for gross misconduct, um, they're going to be eligible as long as they're within their 18-month COBRA window to either elect for new coverage, um, re-elect coverage if they had previously canceled it but are still within that 18 months, mm -hmm. um, or actually uh, continue it on. Uh, through the end of September at 20, of 2021 at no cost to them. So again, essentially the employer is going to pay the COBRA benefit payments to the health plan administrator, and then the employer will be reimbursed through their payroll tax credits. So this is obviously gonna be quite the administrative burden for employers off the bat. However, I'm sure your plan administrators will be there to help you along the way. An important thing to note as well is that this isn't going to change ultimately the timeline of COBRA. So for any employee who would have been terminated prior to the April 1st and is otherwise eligible for COBRA, they only have the 18 months from the time in which they were terminated. So if that's going to end prior to September of 2021, at any point from now until September, those um, their benefits are gonna terminate in that time frame. So this doesn't extend COBRA coverage any longer than the 18 months that anyone would be regularly eligible for. It if your 18 months were to go beyond September of 2021, the, the responsibility is just gonna kick back to the employee. So they're gonna have to continue on with their payments uh, starting in October. So now let's turn it back over to Monica, who's going to discuss who is not eligible for these COBRA subsidies. Right, so uh, just as we were talking about employees who are laid off as a reduction in force, reduction in hours, um, involuntary terminations, those are gonna be the employees who are eligible. So with that said, there are a couple of categories of employees who are not going to be eligible. Uh, so I mentioned earlier, those who are terminated for gross misconduct, 
Um, but above and beyond that, employees who are currently eligible for health care coverage through a new employer. So um, if you have an employee who is laid off, terminated um, as a result of COVID, and they pick up new employment elsewhere, and they have the ability to get new insurance, they need to elect to take the new insurance. You are no longer as an employer responsible for covering the COBRA subsidies. Moreover, any employee who has been laid off or terminated who would otherwise be eligible for Medicare, again, not your responsibility any longer to cover them under the COBRA subsidies if they can elect into Medicare. All right, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Brian, and he's going to talk about some of the responsibilities on employers as we make that transition to the new COBRA coverage. So as we talked about at the start of the episode, um, there are some employer responsibilities that need to be implemented under these COBRA changes. First and foremost is you need to ensure that a compliant notice is sent to your eligible employees by May 31st of 2021. Now, um, the, the government is providing forms to employers that they can utilize. However, I'm sure a lot of your plan administrators administrators also have a similar form that they would like to use. It's just important that you get with your plan administrator um, as soon as possible to to begin the process of having those uh, compliant notices issued to employees. Once an employee receives the compliant notice, they'll actually have 60 days to elect coverage. It's also important to note that employees cannot be charged any administrative fees associated with these implementations of these administrative tasks under the new statute. So um, do not shift any of the administrative fees that your plan administrator may be putting on you as an employer or that you may have internally uh, to implement this program. So I want to conclude by addressing some of the possible fines and penalties that could be imposed upon an employer for failure to implement these administrative tasks. The main penalty is going to be that if an employer does not issue that compliant notice by May 31st, 2021, then they can be charged $100 a day per eligible beneficiary or up to $200 a day per family. So that's all we have for you today on Employment Law After Hours. Please don't forget to leave a comment below if you'd like to discuss this topic further. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and click on that like and tap on that bell that we are notified when we upload new videos. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week.